Good afternoon, our esteemed viewers. Welcome to another edition of Spot Beat on Super Screen Television, where we always serve you the latest season happening in the money spinning world of sport. My name is Olakunle Philip. So, so much to talk about in the world of sport. We all saw those exciting games in the UEFA Champions League uh, yesterday. The game uh, involving Liverpool and FC Porto uh, was expected. But how will you describe the stunning performance of Tottenham Hotspur uh, in the game uh, at the Tottenham Hotspur uh, Stadium uh, against uh, Manchester City? I didn't really see that performance coming. Uh, you will agree with me that the margin is actually slim. Anything could happen in the reverse picture, but I tell you, it promises to be fireworks in the reverse picture. And games will be going down today. So many Manchester United players are talking tough about their chances against um, the team called FC Barcelona. How, they, how will things pan out uh, tonight at the Old Trafford? Time will tell. It's not just going to be about that game alone. We'll also be getting to see Ajax taking on Juventus. I tell you, Ajax seems to be underrated. But when you look at how well they've actually fared so far in the UEFA Champions League, you want to give them a chance. So much to talk about in the UEFA Champions League. It's getting hotter and hotter out there. I'll be doing a comprehensive preview of what we feel happened yesterday. And of course, what will be happening uh, later tonight in the quarterfinal, uh, second round games of the UEFA Champions League. And of course, we'll also uh, be telling you about uh, the, the, the Women's uh, World Cup uh, that will uh, be displayed We are arriving the shores of the country uh, by tomorrow. A lot of us are saying, let the cup stay in Nigeria because the Super Falcons are going to be taking part in that one and of course in nigeria will be leading the delegates uh you know into the country uh today to showcase the fifa women's world cup well we'll be talking about that also on the show this afternoon we'll also i'll uh, be talking about the unpleasant news concerning chairman christian chuku uh we were talking about the fact that uh he was actually in this post and then um, so many people have actually risen uh, to show support, solidarity to this man who served the country diligently during and after his playing days. We'll also be talking about Chris and Chuku right here on Sport Bay this afternoon. We'll also be talking about no other person than Edson Arantes Donas Mento. It's called Pele and um, he's actually uh, gone through an operation uh, in France and is back into Sao Paulo, Brazil, where he's waxing lyrical and is really thanking everyone who has actually shown him support during those times. It's a loaded package on this afternoon's edition of Sport Beat. I urge you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the very best of sport. You can call us uh, on the show to share your opinion about what you actually saw, the games uh, we saw yesterday in the UEFA Champions League, and also the games to go down later today. Promises to be a great and exciting time here. With us, start times 173 and UHF 45. You can do business with us, and I tell you, you will be glad. Indeed, you did. Once again, my name is Olakule Philip, and I've got my partner on the show, Tayo Olonchola. Good afternoon, Tayo. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. And uh, it was a great one for Tottenham yesterday. Uh, I was actually not expecting them to come to the party, but they actually did justice to the match, and I just hope they will go on to the semi final. I, I was actually particular about the way Tottenham Monsport played in that game. And when you look at the pedigree, pedigree wise, and then the fact that, you know, uh, you can't really compare uh, Manchester uh, City to Tottenham Monsport in Europe. But they came out smoking and they showed intent, they showed desire, they showed willingness to win that game. And of course, they got the goal. Yes, uh, actually, if you look at uh, the, the, the situation of things, you discover that Tottenham, they tend to have more experience in Europe because if you look back to the days of Gareth Bale, they've been going, although they've not been doing well. But when you look at the era of uh, Pellegrini in Manchester City, they actually they went further into the semi-final. So due to that, they tend to have more chances of winning yesterday. But Tottenham, they did everything possible to make their fans happy and it was a good one for them. Yeah, their second game in the, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and the young man, uh, you know, uh, the, this, the one called Son, 
actually got that winning goal. Let's talk about Liverpool versus FC Porto. Was there any surprises in that one? Yes, it was. Uh, it, I was not expecting any surprise. The match went the way I actually yeah. predicted. I, I didn't predict uh, a scoreline anyway, but I knew Liverpool would do, the, do everything possible to actually win, most especially at Anfield. And with the way it stands now, they are 80% uh, into the semi final. And I, like I said earlier, I've said when I saw the draw, Liverpool is the only team that have the capacity to get to the final. All right, Liverpool has the capacity to get to the final. You will agree with me that Liverpool has also dominated FC Porto in the UEFA Champions League. The last time out, uh, they defeated them by five goals to nothing. And in, right there in Porto, before they played out a goalless draw in the reverse, Fitcher also beating them yesterday by two goals to nothing. We'll be coming back to the UEFA Champions League later, but we'll begin uh, from the FIFA Women's World Cup trophy that is poised to arrive the shores of the country and will be displayed uh, tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, a lot of us are actually, are actually happy uh, because um, this trophy, I, I believe that we have a chance of winning it, uh, looking at uh, the way the preparation has actually been going, but Tayo is actually laughing. Uh, but you know, impossible is nothing when it comes to the game of football. And one of our own are uh, talking about former Super Eagle striker Osaze or Dewege will be among the FIFA delegates uh, that will be arriving, that will be displaying uh, that particular trophy with three other FIFA players, FIFA um, you know, representatives. Tayo, um, someone said we should just look at that trophy and then just have the faith and believe that it can come back to Nigeria. Do you in any way see this happening at all? Well, uh, we have to be factual here because if you look at female football, Nigeria in the continent we have been doing wonderfully well. But when it gets to the world stage, uh, the Super Falcons have not been doing as expected. Uh, but I just hope this time around they will uh, prove, prove all the critics wrong. And if they can actually do that, I think uh, the NFL should be having everything on pumping more money to female football other than the Super Eagles. All right, Osazio Dewege is one of the FIFA legends for the years. This year's FIFA Women's World Cup. I've actually criticized the team a lot of times, but I just hope uh, they can't surprise me in the forthcoming FIFA Women's World Cup to take place in France come June. They have in a very, very precarious, in a very, very tough group. And so many people are saying they can't come out. They cannot come. It will be very difficult for the team to come out of that team, of that group. But we'll wait to see how things pan out and we'll continue to support our dear Super Falcons. All right, let's quickly talk about uh, this one. Not really very good, not pleasant at all. Uh, in a very, in, you know, months, you know, uh, we've been talking about the fact that Kelechi Nacho hasn't really been getting playing times. And most times when he gets playing times, he doesn't tend uh, to utilize his chances, you know, playing for the team called Lexus City. And right now, he has been rated as the fifth worst Lexus player. Well, uh, it's, it's quite disappointing because if you look at Kelechi Inacho, he's one of the, um, the reliable striker the Super Eagles have now. But it's quite unfortunate that he has not been doing well. He has not been scoring like I could remember last season. He, he, he assisted some chances. He got some, uh, some fighter goals. But it's, it's quite unfortunate. I just hope he will bounce back. Or probably he should just leave the team and go elsewhere because sitting on the bench will not help his career. And looking at uh, the fact that we are approaching the uh, 2019 outcome, we need him in that team. And mm. if he's not getting to play regularly, I don't see reason why he should be part of the, uh, the squad that will be going to the outcome. All right, his um, compatriots talking about um, with Redding Didi has been rated by Lexa as Lexa as the best tackler uh, for the team. Yes, uh, indeed he has been doing pretty well and honestly I, I was actually expecting him to be part of the, uh, uh, the best uh, player in Africa nominee. But it was quite uh, surprising that he was not there. He has been doing well and not just tackling, he has been getting goals mm -hmm. and he has been uh, doing all the dirty job 
And it's a good one that we are getting somebody that can fill into the shoes of Mikel Obi. All right, for Kelly Yenacho, we hope uh, we can uh, return back to form uh, before the African Cup of Nations uh, begins. And we are right behind him, and we just hope he will begin to get his rhythm in the colors of electricity and, of course, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. All right, let's quickly talk about our own legend, Chris Nchuku, who was diagnosed of a very serious ailment uh, just a couple of days ago. And right now, uh, the, the, the chairman of uh, Rangers International of Enugu, in person of David Sinowumi, has come out to say Chris Nchuku does not really need $50,000 for an operation abroad, but rather his health is very stable as we speak. Tayo, this is contrary to what we had as a couple of days ago. Uh, we heard that they actually needed a certain amount, and so many people, including the NFL president, uh, in person of Amadio Pinik, has come out to say, I was going to make uh, you know, provision for the money. We also saw some other you know, entrepreneurs coming out to say, they will also be supporting to ensure that, you know, Christian Chuku stays alive. But, um, you know, there is no one coming out to say, the Rangers are right behind him and they've been giving him all the support and he doesn't really need the $50,000 for an operation in the United States of America. Well, uh, I don't buy the idea of Davis Omi because from the clip we've seen, you can discover that the man is in seriously in critical condition. And it's quite unfortunate that we get to see our uh, heroes uh, going through this particular line after they have served the country very well. I, I think they should just come out and they should desist from uh, playing politics with the, of the, uh, with the head of this man because that was how uh, Yemi Teller, after he has served Nigeria, done uh, pretty well. One he just day, died. You, you know, so I, I just wish, I, I, I feel everybody that is concerned, the Football Federation and all the uh, ex international to just rally around and, and help him in this predicament. All right, we wish him, Chris and Chuku, uh, the very best. We cannot afford uh, to lose him right now. You serve the country diligently, and then that kind of money should not be an issue at all for a hero who served diligently. I remember I didn't get to see that game because, uh, you know, the, the, the African Cup of Nations uh, in 1980. I was pretty young uh, then, but I saw clips of how he was rock solid in the defense, the heart of the defense uh, for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. They were called the Green Eagles then, alongside the likes of Muda Shirulawal and, um, you know, also of other top players, the mathematical Shegun. We hope that, you know, it will recover fully on time. And of course, uh, we wish him long life and prosperity. We hope that no evil will come near him at all. All right, let's also talk about another legend uh, of Brazil. And of course, the world who is actually in, uh, you know, a critical, a critical condition at some point in time was his back too, uh, you know, his health is actually sound as we speak, talking about no other person than Edson Arantes do Nascimento in person of Pele. He has actually been discharged from uh, the French hospital and his back is Apollo, uh, Brazil. You could see the picture he actually took uh, with, um, it was, um, I think it was Neymar, uh, yeah, you know. Mbappe. We had Kylian Mbappe, and I think Neymar also went to visit him right when he was in uh, France. Very, very good one. And then he has actually come out to thank um, everyone who has come out to support him, to show solidarity, to show love to him in that critical condition. Yes, uh, it's a good one. And uh, we, you can see this is the irony of life. We discover that this is a legend, another legend of a great footballing nation. And we could see how his people rally around him. And they supported him with prayers and with every of their efforts. So I believe things like this, we should be seeing it uh, in our football as well. And it's a good one that he's back on his feet and he's actually kicking. And I wish him a uh, long life. All right, we wish a uh, better long life. He's actually uh, 78 years of age. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't want such a person. Uh, you know, most of, uh, you know, the younger players, uh, actually younger ones who are into our stakeholders in football are really happy to have seen this man, Edson Arantes, who has a mental, uh, Pele, 
alive. We wish him uh, the very best in all his undertakings. All right, let's also talk about another one. Not good, I tell you. Uh, Danny Drinkwater, uh, that player of Chelsea. You more will agree with me that he doesn't get to play regularly uh, for Chelsea, but he has gone. Drinking, not water this time around, uh, but the other one. And then by virtue of that, there was a crash. He actually crashed uh, with his car and he was arrested uh, by the legal authorities. Uh, he was released eventually, but right now he is going to face trials in about a month. <laughs> uh, you talk about Danny drink water. You expect him to drink water, but right there he was drinking and driving. And this is not accepted in a developed country like the United Kingdom. Well, uh, it's quite unfortunate and um, it's a good one that he, uh, it has shown that in a sane society, nobody is above the law. And um, most importantly for his career, for his pedigree, uh, I don't think he ought to have done a thing like that because a lot of, uh, apart from being a football star, a lot of young players are looking up to them. And um, for him to have done that is risky to his life and it's risky to other people. And most importantly, probably because he has not been playing for Chelsea. That's why um, he's not been busy. That is why he's, <laughs> he's been living uh, a reckless life. But I just hope he come out of the political mess. Because right. it's not a good one for him. All right, not a good one for Danny. Uh, drink what I remember he was bought to the tune of 35 million pounds uh, by Chelsea from Leicester City after posting a good performance in 2015-2016 season. But when he actually, when uh, eventually he was um, actually bought and then he could not really settle uh, playing about 44 games for Chelsea and then not really uh, making things count 22 times, I beg your pardon, he actually played uh, for Chelsea on 22 different Occasions. All right, let's quickly uh, switch attention from that and because we'll be going straight uh, to the happening in the UEFA Champions League. We saw those two exciting games taking center stage. Let's begin uh, with the game involving Liverpool and Porto. Tayo, I spoke about the fact that Liverpool were the better team. When you look at Liverpool as a team in 33 games in the English Premier League, they are the only team that has lost just once so far in this campaign. And coming up against a, a Porto team that they've dominated, I think um, this result is a no surprise. It is no surprise to me. And uh, just like you said, they, they actually lost. The only match they lost, they lost to Manchester City. And Manchester City is considered the best team in England presently. And uh, it's a good one for them. And like I said earlier, Liverpool is the only English team presently. Although other English teams are decent side as well, but they have the experience, they have the pedigree, and they have the record working for them. And with what they did last season, I still hope they can go all out in the second leg so, and do justice. All right, you don't see any surprises? You don't see probably Paul to uh, put it, pulling the chest on out of the fire? In the reverse well, it is a game of football, but probably if Porto had gotten an away goal yesterday, one could have been thinking they could. But and then you know Liverpool are like, very, very. I mean, they're a team that is good away from home. Uh, they tend to score goals plenty. When uh, for me, I didn't give them a chance again. Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena, but they surprised many of us with an impressive goals. I mean, victory. Over there yes, uh, that's one of the matches that we must uh, take the uh, cognizance of because with their performance against Bayern Munich, one could come to the conclusion that anybody that come up against them, they are ready uh, to do justice to it. All right, let's quickly bring you the highlight of the game involving Liverpool and Porto at Anfield yesterday. <laughs> 